doing? You're too cute. Hey guys, it's me, Victoria, and we are back in my bathtub because today we are going to be answering your guys' hamster questions. I asked you over on my Instagram stories to ask me hamster-related questions, so today we're going to be answering them, and we have Tater Tot here with me, who is just going to be playing around in the bathtub, and I will be getting Honey and Bumble out as well. So let's get started. So the first question that I have is, what is the maximum time a hamster can be in a hamster-proofed room for playing? This really depends on your hamster, of course. Um, I don't think there's really a time limit of how long your hamster can be out playing as long as they aren't um, looking stressed out or they're not trying to go into a corner and trying to go to sleep then I can then I would say they can be out as long as they want. The next question is how long does it take to tame a Roboroski? So there is really no time length when it comes to taming a Roboroski hamster or any hamster for that fact. It really just depends on the hamster itself. Robos are one of the hardest species to tame. Um, so it can take anywhere from a couple weeks to a couple months um, to some don't ever become tame. So there is no time frame when it comes to taming. The next question is how can you keep your hamster warm in the winter? So this is a good question because with all of the recent cold weather a lot of countries have been experiencing, it is really important that you keep whatever room your hamster is in warm. Um, anything below 15 degrees Celsius or 59 degrees Fahrenheit is a temperature where your hamster can actually go into torpor. So you want to keep the temperature warmer than that, obviously. Um, some good ways would be to make sure they have lots of bedding and lots of soft bedding like any paper-based bedding and toilet paper is good as well. Um, a space heater is also good to just put in that room just so that it keeps it warmer. The next question is, is it okay to take it slow when taming a hamster? Yes, of course. I actually find that taking it slower when taming a hamster is a lot better. Um, if you go too fast when taming your hamster, it can set you back a lot um, and they may not become tame as fast because if you're trying to go too fast, it just might not work out. But if you do go slower, it can be good for the hamster. Um, it helps them get used to you more easier. The next question is, why didn't my winter white turn white? So winter whites do generally change to white, hence their name winter white, but Winter whites actually don't change their coat coloring based on the temperature outside. It goes off of how many hours of daylight there are in the day, which is why winter whites in captivity may not change their color, their coat coloring to white because we have um, artificial lighting in our housing. There also is the issue with hybrids. Most of the time when you go into a pet store and you get a winter white, you are not getting a purebred winter white. Um, you're getting a hybrid of a Russian Campbell's Dwarf and a Winter White. So your Winter White may not actually have a lot of Winter White in them, therefore they may not change to white. The next question I have is, I've seen some people give hamsters dog treats, is that okay? Yes, you just need to make sure the brand of dog treats you are using is a safe and pretty minimal ingredient dog treat. Um, brands like Milk Bone I would avoid because of the very long list of ingredients they have in there and they've also been known to put roadkill in their dog treats which I don't think that's that great so try to go for a dog treat that's very like healthy and there's very little ingredients and they're all natural so the next hamster I have out here is Bumble so you guys get to watch her so the next question I have is why did you decide to do German hamster themes so it was only until I started doing some more hamster research um, based on other countries I was interested to see, um, learn more about how Germans care for their hamsters because it is a lot different from the US and Canada. So after I had done a lot of research from like hamster forms in Germany and things like that, I really liked the way they cared for their hamsters and the way they set up their hamster cages because they're really for making the cage as natural as possible to stimulate like 
how they would live in the wild so I really like that and that is one of the reasons I decided to change to a German hamster style cage and I just think it's a lot better for the hamsters. The next question is can I use the same wooden toys for two hamsters? Yes you can, you just need to make sure um, none of your hamsters have any illnesses, um, none are sick so that you can't transfer a illness to another hamster. As long as all of your hamsters are perfectly healthy then it is fine to share wooden items. The next question is can I introduce hamsters with other animals? I personally would not recommend trying to introduce your hamster to another animal. Hamsters naturally are solitary animals, so they don't need to be introduced to another animal. They most likely will be stressed and scared by it. Um, also, you don't know how they're going to react. For example, if you decide to let your dog and hamster sniff nose to nose, you might think, oh my dog is really like a good dog, he's not going to bite my hamster or try to eat him. but you don't know how your hamster is going to react. If you put them nose to nose and your hamster reacts badly and decides to bite the dog on the nose, your dog might have a reaction and try to bite back and that will not end well. So the next question is, can I go close to my hamster when I'm sick? So actually hamsters cannot catch the human cold or rhinovirus and that is because it is not zoonotic. So what that means is it it is not transferable to animals. So you can go near your hamster when you are sick. Um, I personally don't recommend like sneezing on them or like getting snot on them, but you are okay to go near them when you are sick. The next question I have is what kind of playpen do you use for your hammies? So I actually use some storage grids that are a salt. They're not like mesh like the rabbit ones I have. They are solid. Um, grids and I just connected them with zip ties so it is a foldable playpen it's really big and I really like it so I will leave the link to where I got those so if you're interested in getting one and making one yourself then you can do so the next question is can you give hamsters rabbit mix and guinea pig mix this would have to be a no hamsters and rabbits and guinea pigs all have completely different diets and dietary needs so it is not suitable to be feeding your hamster, rabbit, or guinea pig mix. The next question is one that I've been wanting to answer for a quite some time now, and that is, would you recommend Oxbow for hamsters? Now this is nothing against Oxbow. I think Oxbow is a wonderful brand when it comes to um, herbivores, such as guinea pigs, rabbits, and chinchillas. But when it comes to hamsters, it really isn't suitable. So one of the first ingredients actually in the Oxbow hamster pellets is Timothy hay meal, I think it is. Hamsters don't need Timothy hay in their diet. They're not herbivores, they're omnivores. So Timothy hay has absolutely no benefit to them in their diet besides maybe fiber. Um, hamsters actually don't really like to eat hay anyways. When people put it in their hamsters cages, they're generally using it for um, keeping the burrows stable. Excuse me. Another reason that I don't recommend the Oxbow hamster pellets is because it's lack of variety. What are you doing? And it's low guaranteed analysis. So they are quite low in protein and so even when you mix them with a seed mix, the protein isn't going to go up. In order for Oxbow to be suitable for a hamster, you would need to mix it with a high protein pellet and a seed mix. And if you're already going to do that, it's kind of pointless to be adding Oxbow in anyways. It doesn't like give them anything extra special. So I don't think Oxbow is a suitable hamster's mix. So the last hamster I have out to play is Honey. So the next question is how often do you do cage cleanouts? So I actually do not do cage cleanouts a lot um, and that is because of the size of my hamsters cages and because I know how my hamsters are. All of my hamsters have certain places that they pee so I only clean out those certain spots. It's not necessary to be cleaning out all of the bedding every single um, month unless your hamster has peed everywhere. Um, most hamsters don't, some do of course, but most will choose a couple of places to pee and so it's really only necessary to clean out those certain spots because if the bedding hasn't been soiled then it's still clean and just because your hamster has walked on it or maybe even pooped on it, it's not going to be necessarily dirty. And cleaning out the entire cage actually is just stressful for your hamster. 
So that's why I don't clean my hamsters cages out fully very often. So the next question is, why is pet care for hamsters and small pets in general so terrible? I think one of the reasons why it's so bad is because of how easy it is to obtain a small pet. You can go into any pet store and they will have a small pet there for you for sale and you can pretty much, anybody can just go in and buy a small pet, it doesn't really matter. As long as you say, yeah, I have a cage or I'm getting this cage today, they don't really care. Um, Another reason is because they're so cheap. Hamsters in a pet store maybe might be no more than $20 and a lot of people just think of them as disposable pets, meaning I'll just buy this $20 hamster. If it dies, I'm going to replace it. Therefore, they don't consider the care very much and people like that I don't think are good people because an animal that is living and breathing is not disposable no matter how much it costs. Oh my goodness, you did it! Good job! <laughs> the next question is, why does my hamster keep digging in the corners of her tank? One of the reasons that she might be digging in the corners of her tank is because she wants to burrow. So it would be a good idea to give her a lot of bedding in the corners maybe, or in a section so that she is able to burrow. The next question is, I adopted a hamster yesterday, he's 5 months old and he ate a piece of his poop, is that okay? So this is actually completely normal and a lot of animals do this and that is because of the way a hamster's digestive system works and <laughs> and it is because the first time a hamster eats and digests their food sometimes nutrients aren't absorbed the first time. So hamsters actually make two types of poop. They make one that is just poop and then the other has um, nutrients and things in it. So they know the difference between the two and generally um, as soon as they poop it out, they will eat it, um, and that is just so they can reabsorb the nutrients they missed the first time. The next question is, are there any hamsters living out in the wild? So this is actually something a lot of people for some reason don't know, but yes, there are hamsters in the wild. Um, there are Syrian hamsters who are not domesticated and they live out in the wild where they naturally come from. So, okay, you're on my shoulder now. Excuse me, where are you going? How do you get a fall? Syrian hamsters are actually at a vulnerable state, so they are, population is decreasing. Thankfully, the company Roadie Pet has actually created a golden hamster program, so they actually have um, a field in Syria, I think it is, and they've made it, so um, it's like a Syrian hamster sanctuary. It's really, really cool, um, and I definitely would recommend checking out videos on them. The next question is how many hamsters can you have in one cage and that is a very simple answer and that is one. Hamsters are quite um, solitary animals, they should not be housed with another, especially Syrians. Syrians and Chinese hamsters are solitary animals. What are you doing? So the last question is, is it bad that my Syrian burrows a lot, he spends more time underground than above? So that is completely fine. Hamsters are natural burrowers and that is just something they're going to do and it's actually really good for them to be able to burrow. So I wouldn't be really concerned about your hamster burrowing a lot because it's just a natural behavior. So yeah guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you all have enjoyed and maybe learned something new about hamsters or had your question answered. I'm going to try to do these a little bit more, so be sure to follow my Instagram so that you can watch when I post a story asking for your questions. So yeah guys, thank you for watching. Bye!